Station. The cold station here. Right, this is a show where we spotlight South Florida's uh, most epic local artist. Our first guest today is Frank Busta. Busta? How do you say your last name? Uh, either one. <laughs> All right. I wrote you a little intro. Let's see if you like it. All right. Our first guest is Frank Bust Busta. <laughs> Is, uh, he's a local Miami virtuoso musician, an ultra-talented multi-instrumentalist. He's a being from another planet with access to higher dimensions of musical thought and understanding. I have been, uh, yeah, I've been a fan of Frank's uh, artistry ever since I heard him play. I don't even know when I met you. It must have been like, probably like at Roots or something. And I was yeah. just so goddamn impressed, dude. Just Aww. so impressed. Um... Oh yeah, I, right here. I, in fact, I almost cried to the sounds of your harmonious vibrations hitting my ears. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. You can find him at Busta Music uh, on Instagram. Um, and um, are you on any other streaming platforms or anything or no? Uh, not at the moment, but soon. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. You got to catch him live. That's pretty much it. Like, yeah. Frank, it really, you're just like a fucking live experience. Yeah. So yeah, as, think, as you guys have already probably heard, if, uh, you know, this guy's yeah, rocking. Dude, so yeah, thanks for coming out Thank here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, for yeah. sure. Dude, so yeah, we just saw you perform and like, just incredible. I don't even know. Like, where does that come from? How, where where did you first figure out that you were like this just fucking source of talent? Um, I think it had to start um, somewhere between middle, high school. I mean, it just started getting into a lot of different instruments mm. like learning not only violin but piano and guitar and drums and i just became obsessed with it to be honest i did not spend any time doing anything else um, really wow oof. <laughs> Let's restart. No, no, that's great. Well, no, I yeah. love that, man. That's really we're where, where were you? Where were you learning um, all these instruments? Like, were you learning at just at home? Were you going to classes or, or both? You know, uh, for me, it was a lot. YouTube, um, a little bit of YouTube, yeah. a little bit of friends. Um, a lot of it started, to be honest, in the church. Oh, uh, nice. My dad oh. being a pastor, and I was just either like in you know listening to the sermons or sneaking off to go play the piano somewhere you know and i think that's where i kind of just started getting uh, a little more a little more obsessed with it you know and just kind of a little more mo motivated to just mm -hmm. try and become better and like i would see people perform and at my church and also you know at other concerts or local shows and I just remember thinking I wanted to be that person. I wanted to be that person that could be on a stage and express myself in a way that was allowed me to communicate my feelings and my intentions and my expressions that was hard for me, you know, verbally, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because that's something I noticed when you play, like, there's a lot of, like, you can see your facial expressions. Like, you get really, really, like, into it. And, like, sometimes you'll smile, sometimes you'll, like... I don't know, there's all these like micro expressions in your face that you can tell like, plus you're singing all the notes at the same time, so I don't That's know. That's pretty sweet when you start doing that, like when you start like humming where you're going, and, yeah, like, where yeah, you yeah. are, like, yeah. No, yeah, that's that's something I, I picked up uh, as like a, an advice, a tip from a friend. I would see a lot of jazz musicians, a lot of jazz guitarists, specifically gypsy jazz guitarists. Um, when they would solo, I would hear them scat you know the notes that they're playing and oh. um i had a lot of teachers and mentors that would recommend using that would suggest that method to i guess just kind of lock down where those notes are in your mind and like you know i guess how you're seeing everything like intervallically and whatnot yeah i've heard like blues players like when they're 
soloing or whatever they're singing at the same time but yeah yeah and aside from the technical it's also i think a way to just further immerse yourself into what you're playing Mm -hmm. you know now you're not just thinking about it you're also singing it and you're you're, you have to match what your violin or what whatever whatever instrument you're playing Mm -hmm. on is doing and and it just kind of helps me lose myself a little bit more and kind of just you know, detach myself from whatever might be distracting. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I was thinking, like, where do you go when you're playing? Man, I sound so like I'm doing like an interview, but like to be honest, like I like when I was watching you play, it was like, where do you go anywhere in your head? Like we just talked a little bit about the scatting being more immersed in it. Like you, cause he was saying too, you're just you're there. You can tell you're you're there. And we're just enjoying where you are, you know? But where do you go? You're just channeling yeah, it, like, yeah. or whatever. Is there any places you go? Or are you thinking, like, this is the next note? Or, you know, like, anything, really? Uh, You know, it's, you know, half the time it's knowing what I'm going to play. And half the time it's uh, not knowing. And I think that's part of the fun with improv is that you're in the moment. And it's always kind of like a little bit of a surprise. You know, even if you have, like, maybe a few notes that you have, like, you know, ready to dish out at any moment, like, you know, there's always going to be a bit of spontaneity in the way you do it, in the tone, in the timbre, in the, in what techniques you're using to bring out that note, et cetera, et cetera. Um, honestly, it's, it, for me, it becomes like a, an intensely meditative state almost. Like, mm. there will be moments when I'm playing and I, I, picture just you know sceneries or i'll picture atmospheres or i'll picture even stories of heartbreak or loss or or grieving or even shakespearean stuff yeah man (laughs) you know like i think one of the main things that attracted me to music um wasn't so much the technicality and how you know how good you could become with the dexterity of your fingers and all that It, it was how it translated to the feeling and to the emotion yeah exactly and you know you see it today there's you know great use for music and therapy you know Mm. yeah that's like i mean like a lot of the great music comes from like pain and all that anyway so exactly but it's like like i said in the intro i kind of flubbed it up but like that one uh, showcase we did at like the bay fives at Juanchi's or whatever Mm -hmm. and i managed to film like almost everyone's performance i caught yours but dude, like I, I never cried, like or teared up to like sound. You know what I mean? Unless there was lyrics in it, like when you're listening to Hallelujah or whatever, and you just like got broken up in high school yeah. or something, and <laughs> like that. But I've never like heard a, a song like an instrumental, let alone like a soloist, yeah. where I felt like like overwhelmed and I had like tears. You know what I mean? Like so, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> you had, like superpowers, dude. That was incredible. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. So yeah. So what you just did, was that like all improv or? Um, so uh, what I performed, um, I'll let you guess which one's improv or not. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest, I, w- I want to say maybe like 70% of it was improv. Some wow. of it was, you know, prearranged ideas that I had coming into this. and mm-hmm. um, But a lot of it was definitely like off the dome of, you know, whatever I'm feeling and you know, just different energies that have been circulating my life mm-hmm. lately. Just trying okay. to put that out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's so pretty sweet. dope. Do you practice a lot, like every day, or is um, it more just like you got into a point where you're just that fucking good? You now. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't that's even call it practice <laughs> anymore. You know, I mean, I I do practice every day, but like I I I think uh, you know with practice, it's like one of those things that a lot of people like either dread or they really you know. It feels like a chore. In. Yeah, I hate thinking of it as practice. Exactly. Yeah. But, like, when you're practicing, like, I don't think you should be worried about, oh, how much time do I have left or, like, have I reached the one hour or anything. I think it's about just working on your craft and, like, taking um, pride in, in, in the progression and your advancement and, and noticing your flaws and your, and your weaknesses as well as your strengths and, and trying to just, you know, better yourself. And mm-hmm. some people want to, some people don't. Some people have hard time kind of navigating those things, but I... I feel like it's just been something that I'm always, you know, it's always been a constant in my life, you know, mm. with, uh, not to get too personal, but, uh, just, uh, just <laughs> That's like, fine. you could dish it out here on a cold station. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> you're here first. <laughs> you're here first. 
all the traumas from all the, our right, lo- no. favorite local artists. Your favorite local artists, for sure. All their addictions and... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, but, um, I don't know, just like, uh, you know, being young, you know, young kid, and, and I originally lived in Jersey, and I was, like, moving up, moving around a lot with my family, and just, mm. like, not having, like, a stable home or stable, like, you know, just any sort of stability. Of, yeah, or whatever. exactly. You know, violin became that one thing that was stable. You know, mm-hmm. I always had it. It was always there for me, and like it yeah. was something that I could like a world you could always go into or whatever. Exactly. You know, that's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. That's sick. Uh, I, yeah, for me, I, I wanted to ask a, to just kind of segue a little bit uh, from that to uh, when was the first time you heard the violin? If you remember. Um, oh, yeah. I, yeah. Remember, I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, <laughs> sick. That's cool. It's like yeah. the first time I heard the Beatles. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. It was, it was, um, it was third grade um, mm. elementary. It's a good good place. Yeah, yeah. Right? Prime. Yeah, prime one. <laughs> uh, my music teacher had uh, basically just invited a friend of his that played violin. Mm. And they came over to the class and, you know, they played a song. To be honest, I do not remember the song. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. But um, I remember just being like so mystified by it. I remember feeling like, like I don't know, like how is it that this thing can like bring out these sounds that make me feel this type of way? And yeah. I was just like, whoa, like this is beyond me. Mm. And I waited till like after school to go meet up my music teacher and ask him I if I could learn. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, literally, I was like, I need to learn this. Like, this is super cool. Like, is there any way we can like get this started? And he told me to talk to my mom, and the next day I got started. Oh, oh nice. wow, okay. So, yeah, next okay. day, he called his friend, they came over, we... And that was the first instrument that you, like, picked up and were like, that's what I... Like, yeah, yeah, wow. absolutely. Um, it definitely took me a while to, like, fall in love with it as much as I have now. I, mm-hmm. I don't think anyone who starts playing violins that sounds good immediately. <laughs> no, that's the, that's the yeah. worst. When you have, like, a kid or whatever, and they're like... Yeah, no, no, I was... I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. always, like, so, like, out of tune or whatever. Yeah, no, I was... Dissonant. I was... I mean, for any other musician that has gone through this, I, I was I was practicing in the bathroom, in the basement, and I was in the backyard outside, because wow. it was that bad of a noise. <laughs> it was the worst. It took me, took me a while, but, um, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, you get better at, and you learn how to love it, and you learn... You know, you, you, you get paid back, you know. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, like, s- all music, in a way, or all art is sort of like a relationship where, like they say, like, a marriage is not easy. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to put a lot of work for it to, like, sort of start giving things back to you as well. Yeah. And I feel like the same with music. Like, you can sort of, like, and this happens to me. I get really excited about an instrument, you know what I mean? And then, like, I'm, like, oh, for, like, a month, like, this is cool. And then... I sort of reach a plateau and I'm like boring. Like I don't I don't get that same yeah. almost like the dopamine rush anymore. So except from like guitar and piano, but you know what I mean? Like you find your instruments and you have to like keep working at it. Too. Yeah. And I, and different things call to different people, you know. Like I you know, I, I honestly I played violin, but I also picked up a lot of different other instruments just to in the end find myself today being like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna stick i'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with this one. Yeah. this is gonna be my main you know cool. <laughs> yeah. just so just so everyone's aware we're like in this music room night right now full of all sorts of instruments and frank i think you picked up like four of them to play out of nowhere <laughs> like the drums the, the guitar the violin like yeah how the fuck you play so many things <laughs> Yeah. Do you play any like like woodwind? And, no, like, no, like, wind no stuff? woodwind, no brass. Unfortunately, you I tried. Blow. I tried. No, no blow. <laughs> <laughs> my my grandfather played the sax actually. Oh, sweet. Yeah, he he was also another inspiration that and, and motivation that got me like to stay with music and to you know just excel and you know every, imagine every day you know every single night your grandfather is playing the sax you can hear it throughout the whole house that's awesome yeah. It's, yeah it's beautiful that's beautiful it's, yeah can't help but be a little curious and be like oh can i play with you yeah. <laughs> that's biopic life man that's like a yeah. movie in the future man yeah. where, like your grandfather's at the beginning of the movie you know and, yeah man. you know what i mean that's yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. awesome no I'm, I'm is he still around playing music or no unfortunately he passed away a couple years ago um sorry yeah. to hear yeah no it's it's the way things go I'm yeah right i <laughs> mean He's he's here with me now, you know. I feel him when I play, when I'm, when I'm, you know, outperforming. I definitely feel his presence. You know, I I think that I'll never forget that. You know, every day, whether he had a bad or good day, he would come to my room and tell me, you know, to 
to never settle for less and to know my worth and to to mm. keep on pushing to you know what i need to succeed and what, yeah, I, awesome. what I want you know nice what a guy yeah wow. good words to live yeah. by man for nice. sure Most right, definitely <laughs> yeah but, so, uh, so uh other than the violin what are what are the specific instruments that you are playing to today um so um i would i would have to say primarily uh keys the keys yeah, yeah. Nice. um piano keyboard synth what have you um i saw i saw on one of your posts that you were playing the keys like jamming out and like yeah yeah i also um if anyone's curious i occasionally play with uh, cheetah simulator um simulator. Yeah, as a okay. trio known as frank frank simgoon and uh yeah <laughs> well that's with phil and and the the, the drummer yeah yeah phil forget his name but... green and simon on drums killer drummer Wait, isn't Phil Goon Green? I'm so confused. Yeah, Phil is Goon Green. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Goon Green and so and so. Like, you got alternate personalities. No worries, um, yeah, that drum was really good. There's yeah. that, that one gig I saw you at a, at Lincoln's where you said it was all improv. I'm like, how the fuck? This mm. it's Frank and the drummer, they get on and they play for like almost like an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like this improv <laughs> jazz, like wild <laughs> shit. You're holding the keyboard like this because it's kind of falling. The stand's not really working, but it's flawless <laughs> yeah. playing somehow. What? And then I asked you, like, I stick around because I'm like, I've never really heard music like this. It's yeah, just like yeah. wild. And, and yeah. then, yeah, you're like, it's all improv. I'm like, how the fuck do you... There, there's no, like, it's not four by four. You know what I mean? It's not easy no. to keep up, but the drummer's keeping up with whatever. And then you're, like, and you're communicating. Keeping up with you. Yeah, exactly. How does that work? Uh, I think definitely, you know, understanding... Understanding rhythm, harmony to an extent, and I think learning drums for a little bit, you know, during high school and college was like a huge backbone in the rhythm that I've gained today. Mm. Um, it, it's it's a it's a mix of communication and and just you know random events that happen and and, and you're just like oh, you're just like on the same wave. Yeah, you, you just gotta go with it. I think uh, uh, to be able to hit improv, you have to get rid of hesitation. You have to be willing to commit to whatever you have in your mind, you know. And even if it's, and I like to tell people, even if it's like you, you know, you think it's like a quote unquote wrong note, like hit that wrong note again, like make that work within the context, you mm. know, because um, a lot can be said. Like every note, every interval, every phrase, every motif has an intention, has a meaning behind it, has an mm. emotion, you know, it has something to say. Basically. For sure. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they say, yeah, that's right. Like, if you hit a wrong note, hit it again. Because it's like, if it's repeated, it's not wrong anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was, yeah. It was, that's, that was the point. <laughs> oh, okay. I did that on purpose. <laughs> right. Um, well, I, I did have one question. Let me think. I forget. Um, ah, it, it, I spaced. I spaced. Oh, uh, well, um, I wanted to know. I have some. I have a few questions. We're going to wait a little longer. We have some questions from the audience, but I have this question from a person you know. Faith in humanity is calling out a question for you. How do we become an artist? Okay, that is a that is a deep question. How do we become an artist? Gotta sit like this to answer it. Right. right. I'm I'm also thinking too. I'm not sure. Thank you, Faith, for your you, complex. I don't think uh, you question. become an artist. I think you are. An artist. An artist. Thank you. You were bro. born one. Thank you. Bro. <laughs> you couldn't have said it better, honestly. Yeah. No. I. I think to be, to be an artist is is to be an artist. Like you either are one or are not. Well, if if I ha if I can get her question and maybe construe it a little bit, how does it feel to be an artist? Oh my God. You know, like <laughs> you know, like you get to play music. Like today we woke up in the morning and you got to be here and play your music. You know, like you get to be free in a sense, you know, like, does that, how does that feel for you? You know, like, so many people are locked in, like, you know, jobs or certain things they don't want to do. You get to do what you want or, to or, do. Or better said, like, they don't, a lot of people maybe don't have that kind of outlet that you mm -hmm. were describing, right? Of, uh, to be know, able to express. People just, like, end up doing drugs. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Drugs, <laughs> you could still drugs. do drugs and be an artist, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> Stay creative. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. So I think um, I think it's a blessing. It's one of the biggest blessings that I, I can acknowledge in my life. I think that I strongly believe that you know I wouldn't have it any other way. 
being an artist and dedicating myself to this craft has allowed not only many doors to open, but a lot of fruitful relationships to blossom. And I, I think, I don't know, I honestly, I, I, I don't know if I'd be here right now if, if it wasn't for music, to be honest, you know? You mean like, like what? Like suicide? No, I mean, like, <laughs> like I, I just like, I mean, here in Miami, here in Florida, period, like, I just... Um, I mean, yeah, if you didn't play violin, you w literally wouldn't. Yeah, no, wouldn't I, 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 would, I, would, I would be in New Jersey. I'd be in Trenton, probably working, like, a trucking job or something. Dang, God, you know, God knows, you know, but here is, here is where I was able to blossom, you know, and find that, those opportunities that allowed me to... For sure. To pursue this. We're so, so are you in a, like, how many bands are you in? Like, how many things are you sort of, like, a part of? Or, uh, well, I'm kind of, you know, being a freelance musician, I kind of work on my own schedule and, you know, with my own agreements and, Word. uh, it's kind of officially in a band. I don't know if I could say that I am in one, but, uh, I definitely do, you know, I do partake in different gigs and bands and different, mm -hmm. different showcases, depending on the artists. If, you know, playing keys and playing violin as well, you know, that's, Vers I, yeah. I can feel that demand for someone that might need that instrumentation. For and sure, a lot of, like, yeah, well, yeah, you could, because of your skill set, you have so much, like, that you can give to so many people, yeah. I, yeah, I think. So many projects and stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be just a violinist or just a pianist or just a jazz musician. I want to be a musician. I want to be someone that can be versatile and adaptable, like, and, yeah. you know, yeah. For sure. You were talking about the technique last time before the, we start rolling. Could you show us the the technique that you enjoyed, like that you like playing that one? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so it's uh, it's basically like a like a quick hammer off, basically, or yeah. sorry, pull off. Pull off. Um, but you know, it's I don't know. It just gives it kind of like a little bit of a saucy effect. I don't know. So without it, you could go or. Right, and then with it, adding that uh, pull off on the beginning. You know, it's just something different to kind of uh, ac accent, up. you know, accent that G a little bit, accent that note. But, um, you know, it's just different things that I like to do. And, you know, also as a violinist, a lot of people like to... Uh, I like to think that I only play classical, but or, or that a violinist should He's only just play for classical. Class. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, that's the, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to break those barriers. I'm trying to uh, let people know that the violin is an instrument of many genres. You know, it, it can be used for, you know, classical. It could be used for jazz. It could be used for like you know blues. Disco. You know, you could do like bluegrass as well. <laughs> you know, it's 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 Sick. it's really so a, a fiddle play from work. Ireland or whatever. Yeah, you know. Do they do that? Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. It's up to you though. You know, like where, yeah. where you want to take it. But yeah, that's so fucking cool, dude. The, the the violin is just one of those instruments that just sounds so like. I don't know. Just virtuosity just comes to to mind when I think of it. I don't know. You don't get en enough violinists too, like, uh, like you were saying, like classical jazz. Like people usually stay in their lanes for their violin playing. At least when I'm used to. Yeah. And you bring out everything in your playing. Like you're like, no, it's all, it's it's a it's, it's an instrument. It can do, do what whatever it, it wants to do. do. You know, all yeah. the all twelve notes are there. You know. Like, hey. <laughs> that's, that's, that's no, all, and everything in between because there's no like for sure yeah, with the frets stuff. too. Yeah. yeah. You have more notes, guys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> all the notes. All yeah. of them. Notes. <laughs> That's so nuts, dude. How do you do that without... Because, like, that's something that to me is a bit, like, foreign. Playing guitar and stuff is, like, the fret is there. That's where I press. You know what I mean? But this is all just, like, fine-tuning your ear pretty yeah. much and getting, like, the muscle memory. Yeah, literally, it's, it's just fine. that. It's just repetition, practice, that's training. So intense, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I, I wanted to... Just segueing away from music, I wanted to ask what skating means to you. Because you're, you're posting... A lot of pictures of skating, videos, and you're like, you're like on a rail and shit. Like, yeah, what does yeah. It amateur mean pro. Oh my god. <laughs> check it out, check it out. Um, uh, skating, yeah, skating has been uh, a recent venture that I've, I've gone into, and it's, uh, I want to say like uh, one of the 
one of the biggest passions I have right now, aside from music. Um, mm. Extremely therapeutic. Uh, not only that, but the community has been like absolutely amazing. You know, wonderful people. A lot of encouragement. A lot of support. And you know, it's just another outlet that I have that isn't audio based. That, mm. You know, that I could get get my energy out. Get myself right. Out, yeah. You know? And it's intense. No, I mean. Yeah. Like grinding on rails and doing. What is that? A half pipe? I don't even know what they're called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> Empty doing pools. Ver- uh, vertical. Uh, yeah, we're doing a lot with the bowl, with the grinds, with the rails. It's 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 a little risky, a little dangerous. Definitely have had my sh- fair share of scrapes and bruises, but um, and and it's funny because like a lot of people tell me it's like Frank, how can you skate? Like, what if you mess up your hand? I was and, just thinking <laughs> like, that, but I was like, I don't want to be a fucking negative Nancy. No, no, but like it's a lot of people tell me that, and and to your be honest, it, it cracked up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it it does. You know, every I, everything poses a little bit of risk, and skating definitely poses a, a little risk. But you know, I think that you know the most important thing with anything that you do is that you take precautions and that you're safe. You know. Yeah, and and like, dude, what are the chances that like you're gonna destroy like one of your hands like that badly for life? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Or is it? Am I like do? I, I don't know. What kind I of mean, tricks the, are the you chan- doing? The <laughs> <right there>. <laughs> <laughs> Playing violin while he skates. Yeah, <laughs> I actually have done that. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that would make a sick video. Um, uh, yeah. Have you done that before? Yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm I'll that. post about it. I'll let you know. Yes. <laughs> That'd be sick, dude. If you could do a video of you skating and like doing whatever. Have you seen ah, what's that music video? It's like an electronic artist. Whatever. The whole thing is like these these girls are like skating or whatever, and then they come in and out of like the spotlight or whatever. Nice. Imagine that with violin. You no. wearing like booty shorts? No. Hey, hey, you never yeah. know. You never know. What's up? <laughs> yeah, he's gonna do it. Catch Frank and uh, next time we're gonna do booty shorts. Booty short play by live. What's uh, what's a trick that you're uh, working on right now? Uh to oh sorry. Uh I'm working on I'm working on a lot of front side and back side slides. Um, which is basically just kind of grinding on either the curb or like a ledge or a rail mm. and just kinda Jumping on, matching your feet on up the to the rail, yeah, and trying to get that from both directions, basically from front and then also from back. Dance and dance. Yeah. So skate, you mean like, like, is it inline or the one with the with the uh, four? quads? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, quad skates. Um, What's the difference between like, is one for speed, one for tricks, or like? Well, uh, quad skates have definitely been popularized as you know for a lot of like dancing and jam skating, as mm. it's known. Um, and inlines have been, you know, definitely popularized by wizard skating or wizard skating. I don't even. Yeah, know. No, is that a company skating. or is that a thing? No, like it's a, a thing. It's a, it's, it, it, it's, it's like a, <laughs> it's like a, a form road. of skating basically where it's just very intricate, sorry, intricate like feet movement and coordination and balance that you need to pull off a lot of, you know, it's not necessarily big jumps or anything like mm. that, but it's, it's a lot of like intricate precision you know? okay and that it's called wizard because it just like looks like magic or yeah something. yeah no literally that yeah. Happen. and and also park skating and and now recently like in the past couple of years i've noticed like a bit of a rise in um aggressive skating with quad skates okay which is what i've been doing recently and what you know i'm also trying to get other people to do you know to get an aggressive yeah. flow with you yeah yeah exactly <laughs> no, no. right what, uh yeah look i guess uh Fuck, I screwed up. <laughs> no. Because we have a little bit of time left. Like, yeah, just okay. a little bit. Yeah. I wanted to ask you just lastly about the... Um... Be- before you ask, can go I ahead, do one more audience question? Yeah, let's, okay, yeah, let's, yeah. let's do one, that. One last audience question. One last and, audience and we'll question. we'll wrap. We'll wrap. Uh, absolutely. Uh, okay, this is another one by Big Hug Energy. Thank you so much, Big Hug Energy, for your question. This one uh, asks, are there any other instruments you'd like to learn? Woo. Yeah, definitely. Um... The one that has like called out to me for a while, but I just haven't had my chance to get, I haven't had a chance to get my hands on is uh, the cello. Ooh, that's a good one. Very, you know, similar to the violin, but the position, the holding is, it's just like a different technique and something that I want to get down, you know, get get a handle on. Oh, excited for that one. Thanks for kind of big hug energy. That was a good question. That was a good question. All right, so Frank, thank you so much for being here, for performing for us, for answering our questions, and, and sharing with everyone your your experience, your skill, your everything. So yeah, thanks so much for thank being you. here, and for sure, take your man. moment as well. 
Yeah. <laughs> Cold <laughs> Station. All right, Cold Station. We'll be back uh, in two weeks. So see you then. Take your shine and make you sweat I just want this more than life itself